What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and another video of the DYS ELF 83mm Micro Brushless Ready to Fly Racer. What we're going to do today is I'm going to open it up and take a look inside the quadcopter. But first, let's go ahead and see how much this quadcopter weighs. The quadcopter by itself is weighing in at 55 grams. And this is the battery that comes with the quadcopter. So let's go ahead and put that on there. The total weight with the battery is 86 grams. But before we open up the quadcopter, take a look at the canopy. It is a slightly cracked over here. I was flying it around today and landed upside down on concrete. As you can see right on top of the top of the shell, nothing is broken. Uh, this thing has a very hard canopy and only the canopy cracked over here. I thought maybe uh, the prop guards would have taken some hit as well. Uh, as you can see, there's a little scratch on the prop right there, but the brunt of the um, damage uh, was caused to the canopy only, so I'm happy. The camera is still nicely intact and there's no scratches on it, so it is a very durable quadcopter as well. Uh, the motors are the KV 10,000 BE 1102 motors. And as you notice by now, it has the five bladed props and it is the 1735 five bladed props. So taking a look at the underbelly, there is the carbon fiber frame, which is screwed on directly to the plastic frame. So it, everything on the inside is sandwiched between the carbon fiber frame and the plastic housing and of course the canopy. Okay, so let's start taking off the screws. Okay, so just by taking off this screw, this screw here, these two screws here, and that screw, five screws, the canopy comes off. So let's take a look and take the canopy off. Okay, there's some wires attached to the canopy, and what it looks like is the wires are going directly to the camera and there is the FI Sky receiver attached to that wire as well. So let's go ahead and just pull that out and we are able to flip this over and take a look. There is the receiver and it is unlike any of the FR Sky receivers uh, that you can buy in the marketplace. Uh, I think they made their own. It is screwed on to the canopy. So let's take a look. All right, now the canopy can be put aside here and can also take the receiver right off. Okay, here is the receiver. There's the receiver antenna. And what it looks like, it doesn't have a bind button, but what it looks like are, these are the bind pads. You just uh, short these babies out and uh, power up the receiver and you can bind it to your uh, FR Sky transmitter. Okay, so let's put that on the side. And there is the 800 TV line camera and it is screwed right onto the canopy. So that is really nice. So it does not gonna come off. All right, so let's put that on the side there. All right, so let's take a look at the board right here. That would be the front of the quadcopter here, and that would be the back of the quadcopter. These are the ports that I just took the, um, the camera right off right here, and the receiver port was right there. There is the, uh, the buzzer, the lost uh, model buzzer. And as you can see, there's little connectors over here as well with uh, red and black wires. They're going directly to the motor area. But uh, here is the... Uh, the 4-in-1 ESC board, uh, the 10 amp ESC, and there's the three wires that are going towards the motor as well. So these guys over here are probably for the uh, 
the LED light that's uh, right underneath of the motor. Okay, so as you can see, the the four in one ESC board is soldered onto the uh, the PCB board that's on the bottom. And if you look real close, there's little rubber bushings holding the canopy, so lessen the vibration of the uh, camera that's attached to the canopy. All right. So let's flip it over and see the opposite side. Well, if I want to take the, um, the carbon fiber frame off of the, uh, the plastic sandwich, uh, I'm going to have to take these guys off on all of the, um, the motor, as well as I'm going to have to take the motors off because the ESC wires are connected to the top and it runs to the motors on the carbon fiber. So... I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to take a look and just show you um, directly from underneath. You can see everything from here. So take a look here. There is a uh, boot button right on the top. That is not the uh, receiver. Uh, as you saw, the receiver is separate. So that's the boot loader button there. Uh, there is the, the battery uh, power socket right here. And if you look, a little underneath over here as you can see where I'm pointing at that is the the transmitter um, antenna it's tucked underneath all the way on the bottom here so that placement of the antenna is not so good uh, because the battery is going to be covering the transmission somewhat so it could be outside but well they had to put it inside to hide it I guess uh, here is the the button to change the channels and the frequency on the VTX. Uh, the PCB is a all-in-one um, combined with the VTX as well. And this port right here is the OSD parameter adjusting port. So you can hook that up and adjust your parameters. So the VTX button is a single button. So if you hold it down for uh, three or more seconds, um, there's going to be a red LED light right there or a blue LED light that turns on solid. And the blue LED light indicates the frequency. The red LED light indicates the channels. So uh, you let go and then whichever light stays solid, uh, you can change uh, the values of that one. So a uh, single short press will uh, make it blink once, then it's on channel one. Uh, press it again, blink twice, channel two, and so on. And if the blue light stays on, that will be the frequency. And short press it, frequency uh, changes to the second frequency, third, fourth, and fifth. So eight channels and four frequency, though there's a total of 40 channels. All right. So that is about it on the bottom of the, the board here to look at. So let's go ahead and put everything back together and we'll go from there okay so the canopy is put back and everything is put back together uh, one thing to mention too is the uh, the channel changing button the single button um, i was playing around with it uh, this model is supposed to be switchable from 25 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts but i cannot figure out how to change to the 200 milliwatts uh, and i just checked the um, DYS website as well. Somebody mentioned that they took and dropped the uh, 200 milliwatt from their website. So this model is apparently just 25 milliwatt, guys. And here is the the micro USB port right in the back of the quadcopter to hook up to your uh, computer as well. All right, so let's take a look at the transmitter now. So let me go ahead and power this baby on. All right, there is the main screen there. And um, let me hit that enter button and it gives me all the choices. The monitor, enter the monitor. All this is is the diagram of the channel monitor. All right, let's go back. Number two is reverse. Uh, it's all on normal. And if you wanna reverse one of the uh, throttle sticks or whatnot, you can do that as well. And that is it for that one. Channel map. And maps all of your channels. So let me don't want to change any of that. So let's go back out of that. And the expo. 
Okay, on this one, there is the aileron expo, the elevator, and the rudder, and back to the aileron. So if you want to go ahead and change that, you're not able to change that value, but you can change the value of that and then press it again individually you can change that and the expo was set to on aileron it was set to minus 30 when it was shipped so that's why the delay and the uh, the sticks that i've experienced on my uh, first uh, video so i put it back up to zero not back up to zero but put it to zero and it the sensitivity is a lot faster now okay so press it again you are able to change the individual values and then uh, SW is null so can get out of there um, you can change the elevator you can change the rudder the rudder was set to minus 40 on the expo so I put that on zero as well all right so let's get out of there okay the next one is mixing uh, there's the Delta mix and when you enter it, it says INH and you can change it to ACT or INH and the V-tail is the same thing. Now the user mix number one, um, it's on ACT, it was on INH, uh, it's on ACT, you can change the rate value and whatnot on that. So we get out of there and then all it is is straight down the line you got six user mixes and that is it for the mixing channel so let's get out of there and the setup in the setup you are able to bind and if you get into that uh, right away it is in binding mode right now so it takes a few seconds and it'll come back the next one is the ketone uh, you can uh, turn off and on the ketone and the next one down the line is factory set. If you hit that, you reset to the factory. So I'm going to get out of that. And then the next one is the version. You hit that. It just tells you what version this uh, firmware is on the transmitter. All right. So let's get out of that. And that is it. So there is no uh, model setup. So you are not able to set up a second model or a third model on this transmitter. So there is only one model. All right. So that is a little bit of bad news. Okay, so the switch is up here. We got the SWA. This is already assigned to the uh, the arm switch. So you hit it and arms the motors. And all of the um, switches up position is the, uh, the, the normal position. And uh, the next one, the SWB, uh, the up position is in angle mode. The mid position is the horizon mode. And the lower position is a acro mode and it is on air mode as well and the next one the SWC this is the, uh, the OSD and all it's a three-way switch but um, the top and the bottom is off uh, the mid position shows you the, um, the actual horizon and all that uh, if you leave it on the bottom or the top position you are able to see the uh, the other values as well on the bottom like the battery level and stuff like that the swd this one here is the uh, the lost beeper button so if you turn to a switch on and off turns on the beeper and that is about it and these are the all the trim buttons here for the the sticks okay so i got everything powered on so let's check out the osd functionality I'm just going to put a lens cover on there so we can see the screen a little better. So what you want to do then is get the throttle stick right to the mid position and yaw to the right and full pitch and that will bring up the OSD screen there. So here is the, uh, the PID configuration and when you want to change the values use the pitch to go up or to the left and with the throttle or the yaw if you hit the right it'll increase the value and to the left will decrease the value so after you are done come back down here and you can save it or you can exit so let's go over to the pages and flip over the pages uh, the RC tuning 
There's the RC rate and the expo, roll rate and pitch rate and yaw rate and TPA and all that stuff. So let's hit one more. That's the voltage page, the RSSI page, the currents page, the displays page, and the advanced unit signal and the alarms page and the advanced tuning page and the statistics page and we are back to the PID configuration page all right that is the on-screen display for you and to get out we are going to go over to the exit and you all to the right and we are out okay there's a few things that I didn't mention is that the receiver in the quadcopter is the D8R FR Sky protocol receiver and the ESCs are the 4-in-1 BL Heli S F10A ESCs. And the PCB is the integrated uh, F3 flight controller with the built-in VTX. And the VTX is the 5.8 gigahertz 40 channel. And now we know that it is only 25 milliwatts and it is not switchable to 200 milliwatts. And the antenna that was on their belly is a 3 dBi antenna which is supposed to give you 300 meter distance, but now that it is only 25 milliwatts, that might not be the case. As well as the, the D8R FR Sky receiver, supposed to give you 300 meter distance with the remote control as well. All right, so that is it for this video. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, please subscribe and share and have a great day.